Today we're going to do an experiment with a joule meter. And a joule meter is a special cup in which you can do um, experiments with heat energy. Now, uh, how does this special cup look like? Basically, it's a big cup, some insulation material, and a small cup, and a cap. Those are the main parts of a joule meter. And in this particular joule meter, we've got this uh, wire connected to the cap. Um, and this wire acts like a heating element. So when you connect this to a power supply, this there will be heat energy coming from this heating element. So when I put this all together, I can do an experiment. For experiment 2.4, and you can find it in your digital reader, um, we are going to put 150 milliliter of water into the joule meter, like this. We place the steering rod, the cap with the heating element and the thermometer. And we're going to connect it to a power supply, which is set to 12 volt. Did you notice I didn't connect this connector yet to the heating element? It's because I need to record the starting temperature first. And I do that in a table, of course. This is the table I created. And what we'll do is we'll start measuring the temperature for 10 minutes or 600 seconds. And uh, after we've done the measurements, we are going to calculate the amount of heat energy which is uh, transferred to the water and the delta T um, which is the temperature rise in degrees Celsius. But also we are going to use a stopwatch but we're not going to start the time before we've written down the starting temperature. 21 degrees Celsius. I wrote down the starting temperature here, 21 degrees Celsius. Also, I wrote down that there hasn't been any heat transfer yet, so I wrote down zero at the amount of heat in joules, and there hasn't been a temperature rise yet, so in the first row I write down zero degrees Celsius for delta T. Now we're ready to do the experiment, so I'm going to connect the connector to the joule meter, to the heating element I'm starting the time and now let's see what happens so at two minutes the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius so I write down 23 and oh yeah, I can also write down that the temperature difference is 2 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to steer the water a little bit to uh, get an accurate temperature reading. Four minutes have passed so and I read from the thermometer 30 degrees Celsius and at eight minutes what I read is 39 degrees Celsius so I finished my table the only thing I need to do now is calculate how much heat energy has been transferred into the water and for that, I need to know what the power is of my heating element. On the power supply, you could see that the heating element was connected to a PD of 12 volt and that there was a current flowing through the heating element of 2.2 amps. 
With those two numbers, you can calculate the power of the heating element. With the formula P is U times I. When you fill in the numbers, you find that the power is 26.4 Watt. That means every second, 26.4 joules of heat energy is transferred to the water. Now you can use the power of the heating element to calculate the exact amount of heat energy which is transferred into the water. With the formula Q equals power times time. So when you fill in 120 seconds for time, you get 26.4 times 120, which results in a number of 3000 joules. Now I've used this formula to calculate the heat energy for each row. The research question of this experiment is, what is the relationship between heat energy and the temperature rise in a joule meter? This table beautifully shows that the longer we waited, the more heat energy was transferred into the water. And accordingly, the temperature rise became bigger. Now, this might give you clues to answer the research question. But what you can also do is put the quantities heat energy and temperature rise in a graph. And then you will be able to answer the research question much more accurately. Now, try to answer the further research questions in your reader on page 26 and 27 and uh, create a graph of these results with help of the assignment in Google Classroom.